My name is Isabel, I'm 24 years old. I have a really good job, which I really enjoy. I am making $65,000 a year, roughly. I sell my art, I do clown work for birthday parties, I am a wrestling coach, and I model on the side. In a very perfect world, I would be doing art full-time. Family is my everything. I have almost 200 cousins. I am the first person in my family to go to college. As a Latina woman, I feel like it is my responsibility to help out my family. Uh, I really care about other people. I am seeing someone and he does live out of state. If I wanna see him, I'm gonna pay for us to see each other. I would really like to buy a house in the Bay Area, but unfortunately I'm broke. Going from broke that empowers young people drowning in debt Ugh, I can't do this. to become the CEOs of their own lives. I'm Dan Rosenzweig, CEO of Chegg. My co-host, Tanya Rapley and I, are here to help people find their way out of suffocating debt. This is the year. What you're about to see are real-time, unfiltered conversations airing the same week in which we shot them. This is Going From Broke in real time. Hi, Dan. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Isabel. It's nice to meet Hi, you Isabel. guys. It's nice to meet you too. Welcome. This is going to be a fascinating journey because we know so much about you that you don't want us to know. You know, Dan, I coach high school wrestling and what I always tell my wrestlers is to embrace the suck. So I think I'm ready to embrace the suck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the numbers. Isabel brings home a net income of approximately $4,000 and keeps her spending to around the same. Though she has no credit card debt, her student loans are tipping at just above $196,000. I'm gonna be compassionate about this, but I have some questions. I have some serious questions about things that you are um, spending on. And so I wanna dig into some of these things right now because I need answers, Isabel. <laughs> I need answers. Okay. Um, dominoes. What is going on with Domino's? I noticed last month, I was like, how much pizza can one person eat? I need you to explain this to me. You know, I could eat pizza for every meal, every day, honestly. It's cheap. I know, but $52. There was a day you spent $52 at Domino's. Please tell me that wasn't just you. Like, did you buy for someone else? It wasn't just me. Because I also will go to my parents' house and I'll get pizza for the family and the whole house. Oh, so we're buying rounds of pizza for everybody. We're treating, it's not just you. Yeah, that's something we yeah. gotta think okay. about because not only are you paying this expensive student loan um, off, you're taking on the responsibility of that, but then you're also helping out when you can. And then you're also treating for dinner. And even though you're making a decent amount of money, you're not making enough money to come through for people in your life in the way in which you're coming through. Because we also have someone else outside of your immediate family that you're also helping out, right? And can we, can we talk about um, yeah. this wonderful relationship that you're in? Yeah, so I am seeing someone and there's been times throughout our relationship where if money's not there, if his account goes negative, if he needs to be spotted money, I'm there for him. I'm not gonna let him starve. I'm gonna just pretty quickly say, okay, let's order you some food and have it delivered. So this is not me, the CEO speaking. This is me, the father of two daughters speaking. Um, I feel like everybody treats you like Bank of Isabel because you earn for your age. By the way, congratulations. It's insane Thank how you. successful you are at your age or really at any age, right? First in your family to go, got your degree, figuring all this out, putting your hands up for help. But my goodness, you're of no help to anybody if you can't help yourself. So when you were short yeah. on your account, did you go take money from somebody else or did you just stop spending? I feel like people are looking at you to solve problems. You're 24 years old. It's not your job to solve their problems. They're grown-ups, And you're never going to get out of this if you think your job is to solve other people's problems and you're forgetting you owe $200,000. It's definitely not the first time I've heard something similar to what you guys have said. Um, mm. And... You know, from a perspective, speaking with my relationship, those are conversations that we've definitely have had where I'm like, you know, I can't always do this for you. I don't always have the money. And 
it turns into an emotional conversation for us because it's not like he enjoys borrowing money from me. Same thing with my parents. If they're short on bills and I have the money technically in my bank account, I'm going to pay that for them. So I feel like it's always a conversation I've had and it's always I, people are like, hey, these people are using you. And it's like, I don't feel like I'm being used. Um, I feel like I love these people as much as they love me. So it's always like a, a difficult conversation to have with anyone. So Isabel, first of all, you're an awesome human being. Um, Thank you. And part of this job that Tanya and I have, and part of the job I have every day as a CEO, is balancing two things. A giant hug, which I think we want to jump through the screen and give you, and a kick in the butt, which is what I think you need. <laughs> yeah. But even when I was working and going to school, like I've, I've been in the, his shoes where I needed some help. So I completely understand where he's coming from. And you know, right now it's, it's the fun money or if I want him to come to California to visit me or if I want to go to Washington to go visit him, there's a good chance I'm fronting the money for the ticket because in my checking account, I have it and he doesn't. Isabel, I hate to be the one to tell Dan. you this. You don't, you don't have it. You owe $200,000. Yeah. You're financing yeah. your boyfriend's college lifestyle with money that isn't yours. So the first thing is the single most important person in your life has to be you. And I already know from being a parent, your parents are insanely proud of you. And if you never gave them a penny, they'd still be proud of you. You know what they want? They want your financial independence. You know what else they want? They don't want you to struggle with what a lot of young people and a lot of people struggle with, which is what's happening to you now, which is the mental strain of taking the responsibility for everybody in your life is going to cause you a worse situation than just financial. And these are all often connected. And so I, I take no joy in saying to you, you can rationalize every decision you made, but if you went back and looked at them, would you say they were good decisions for you or for somebody else? Right. No, I don't think I've ever um, put myself first in a lot of situations. So Look, you're it's something I definitely struggle to do. The good thing is you're at a place in your journey where you can make a few decisions today or some big decisions today that will even change the trajectory of this year around. And you're going to be able to look back at this and say, oh, my God, who was that woman? Like, look, look where I am today. Yeah. And just to remind you that the road to financial ruin is often paved with good intentions. We want to look at some of these things that you're choosing to do that Okay, if we're gonna if, if we're flying our boyfriend, if you're flying your boyfriend down for the weekend and so forth, then those Amazon purchases or those domino the domino pizza that you're buying for everybody else, it's not gonna work. You can't do it all. And that's what's important to understand. Okay. And when you're in a moment where you feel like, Oh, I can do this all no, you say, Isabel, you can't do this all. Let me do what's best for my financial situation. I have a feeling that what oh. you all you really need here is permission to tell people no. So Isabel, now that we're off air, I want you to know that both Tanya and I really do believe you're awesome. We really do. Um, and I, I think you should feel really proud of yourself. And I think you should not think yeah. of these things as you've done anything wrong. I think we have an entire society that is pushing people to make decisions they don't understand the consequences of. So asking a young person to borrow nearly $200,000 when they've never had a checkbook before and um, probably didn't even earn a credit score yet is, in my opinion, not fair.
Listen, I yeah. could not think of anybody that I've met that is more wonderful than the person that you are becoming. I mean, you are kind, you are warm, Thank you're you. generous. You're a clown. Who doesn't love a clown? Okay, some people are afraid of clowns, but I love clowns. <laughs> um, are you ready emotionally to make the decisions that will make you stronger and yeah. actually make your parents even I'm more proud of you? Definitely I'm ready. You want us to help you? Please help me.